Let's talk about important sampling. Because we have always been talking about uniform distribution. It's, you will see that it's not, usually, it's not a really great idea to sample any function with a uniform distribution. And what I usually, what I am usually looking for is that I have a function that I would like to reconstruct and I have a fixed sample budget. And from this budget, like x samples or x samples per pixel, I would like to get the best estimation possible. Now, we have written the formula for important sampling. This important sampling was before when I divided by the p of x, because I don't only have the f, I will also take into consideration the p, and there I can plug in an arbitrary sampling distribution. It can be uniform distribution, it can be a Gaussian distribution, it can be many things. Now, take a look at this, just a second. Thanks. Okay, so I would like to integrate this function, which is the blue line. So it's a spiky function, and imagine that the green bars is the actual sampling distribution that I use. It doesn't look like a good idea. Can anyone tell me why? Because the green bars are too high in the right side and too low in the middle. Exactly, that's good. So the green bars are too low, too high on the right side, and too low in the middle. Why is this a problem? Just, just a bit loud. It's not representing the actual uh, distribution. Exactly. So it has to represent the actual distribution that we would like to sample. Why? Well, let's skip a few slides. Okay. So if the function takes a higher value at some regions, this means that if I miss out on the reconstruction of this region, then my error is going to be higher. So what you could say is that if there is like a Gaussian function or a spiky function, I would want to put more samples where the spike is because that's a large area. So if I can reconstruct this large area better, I'm doing much better as if I would be sampling the parts that are actually have very small intervals. So the flat regions that are almost zero. So let's put more samples to the regions where the function is actually larger. And if we do this correctly, then what we're doing is called important sampling. So what we're looking for is that I have these green bars, and these green bars should match the blue function. Important sampling again. I am looking for the expected value of f over p. So I divided and multiplied with p of x in the expected value formula. And the question is, what should be the p that I plug in here? So this can be the uniform distribution on AB, or it can be an arbitrary distribution. What would be a good distribution? Usually what is proportional to the function. So if the function is large somewhere, the sampling distribution has to sample that region often, so it also, also should be large there. If it's small in different regions, then it also, also should be small. And this also says that if there are regions where the function is zero, I don't want to put samples there at all because there's nothing to reconstruct. The curve below the function is zero. And we will deal with constructing functions like that, but for now, imagine that I have in my hand a function that is representative of the interval. Now, we have talked a bit about this, so this better this, this should give me quite a bit of an advantage because otherwise it's not worth dealing with. So this is a rendered image with no important sampling. And look closely, you will see now the results with important sampling. So fixed sample budget, it was running for the same amount of time. And this is the difference that you can obtain with simple important sampling. So this means wherever there is more light, I will put more samples. And the darker regions, I will neglect a bit my samples. Let's take a look at another example. You can see how this, how noisy this region is next to the car, and with important sampling, this is accounted for much better. 
Now, we are finally at the moment where we can attempt to solve the rendering equation. So this infinite dimensional singular, this problem child that is so difficult that it seems at first that no one should ever bother to even try it. But now, it seems that we have every tool in order to solve it. So just again, the intuition, the left side after the equality sign means that there are objects that emit light, light sources, if you will. And this I have to account for. But this is not the only source of light. As, the, as these objects emit light, then these will hit other objects that reflect this amount of light. So this means that I emit an amount of light and I also reflect an amount of income light, taking into consideration also light attenuation and the VRDF, which is the material properties of the object that I have at hand. So let's evaluate this through Monte Carlo integration. So again, the formula, I am sampling f over p. This is equivalent of integrating f of x from a to b. Now, what is f? f is what you see up here on the right, this whole thing. Uh, sorry, just the integral part. And p will be something. So I just substitute the very same thing in here on the right side. So incoming light times the BRDF times the light attenuation factor. And there is going to be a P, which is now the sampling probability for outgoing direction. So this means that I hit an object, and I need to have a choice which outgoing direction should I sample. Where should I continue in which direction in my ring? So this is going to be one direction on the hemisphere. This is the Monte Carlo estimator for the actual integral. And let's imagine that we are trying to solve this for a diffuse object. So a diffuse BRDF is the rho over pi. Normally, it was 1 over pi. Why? How can a BRDF be just a number? Well, easy. The perfect diffuse material means that all possible outgoing directions have the same probability. If I hit this table, if it would be perfectly diffuse, we talked about the fact that this is actually glossy. But if it would be perfectly diffuse, like the like most I have here. I hit it somewhere, and the outgoing direction can be anywhere on this illumination hemisphere. They all have the same probability. What does rho mean? Rho is the albedo of the material, because if I say 1 over pi, this means that every ray that comes in will have an outgoing ray. So this object would be completely reflective. It wouldn't absorb completely white. It wouldn't absorb any of the rays. Most objects are not like that. So this absorption is wavelength dependent, and we can represent this as rho. Now, how does the equation look like? I just substituted rho over pi for the VRDF. So it seems that we know everything in this one, just the incoming radians. So what do we do with this sampling distribution? When we hit this diffuse object, we send out samples and we try to collect the incoming radians, which is the Li, with this sampling distribution. And the question is, for this case, what would be a good sampling probability, that is a function, to sample the diffuse P of here? Now, what we said is that this P, the denominator, should be proportional to the numerator. Now, Li, we don't know. This is some, some part that we cannot really estimate because I would have to send many samples out on this hemisphere to know exactly how much light is coming in. But by the time I get to know how much light is coming in, I've done the sampling. So then I am not interested in the sampling distribution because I have a converted image. So this part we will leave out from the important sampling. This we cannot handle as of now. But this rho over pi times cos cosine of theta we can deal with. So. Let's imagine this sampling distribution, which is cosine of theta over pi. And the goal of this is that these people will kill each other. I have a cosine theta in the numerator and the denominator, and the same with pi. So this only, so only this part will remain in there. I can technically also put the albedo of this given material in the sampling distribution, but let's, but let's be general for now. So in the end, I have this 
simple equation. Look at this. This is what is going to be the solution of this infinite dimensional integral. What it says is that I'm going to send samples on this hemisphere and I'm going to average it because in the end I divide by it. That's it. And then if you do something like this and you add the volumetric part, then you can render Marjorie Tyrell from the Game of Thrones. 